The New Mexico Supreme Court has rejected a challenge to a measure that changed the State Public Regulations Commission from an elected body to a group appointed by the governor. Welcome to our line of opinion panelists back for one final discussion. Now, as we tape this, the PRC nominating committee is getting set to confirm their final recommendations for the three person panel. By the time this makes air, those recommendations will have been made. Now we've posted the link on all of our social media pages where you can watch the committee's meeting. It's gonna be interesting. Let's start with that legal challenge though, Sophie. The idea behind yeah. shifting the PRC to an appointed body was to create a more informed selection process, but the groups who challenge the measure say it increases the risk of abuse of power. Is that a valid concern or did voters make the right decision when they voted to change the selection process in the first place? You know, to a certain extent, my sense is that what the Supreme Court has said is, mm -hmm. um, is the time for this discussion is not now. Yes. You had an opportunity back when this was uh, put before the electorate, before mm -hmm. the voters, and uh, you failed to make your case. So, um, you, you know, whether we think one is better than the other, at this moment in time, the voters did make a decision, and we're going to have to see how it plays out. Mm -hmm. Now, will it be that, you know, five years from now, we say, oh, that was a terrible decision? It's possible. Mm -hmm. Both the former PRC setup and the current one, though, were really susceptible to political pressure um, and political issues, for lack of a better way to put it. So whether we vote sure. for our own PRC members or the governor appoints them, um, to, you know, to pretend that politics isn't involved in either, I think is, is naive. Thank you for saying that. We're going to get to the political part in a second. But Sophie, let me ask you one more yeah. thing. Uh, yeah. I, I'm fascinated that petitioners argue that ballot language was unclear that voters may not have understood that they're giving up their right to vote for commissioners. I'm not a lawyer, certainly. That seems a bit of a stretch to me. I, I, I'm interested it felt in your like opinion. A, it felt like a stretch to me, too. Okay. Um, and it, it feels to me a little bit like there wasn't a lot to hang their hats on. Thank you. Um, in terms of this particular argument. And, you know, we haven't yet seen the Supreme Court's written opinion on this. Um, so we don't know exactly how they're going to structure that. Mm -hmm. It will be interesting to see. But, but we do sort of see the timeliness issue coming out um, in what they've said so far. Yep. As we, uh, Serge, I got a question for you. But as, as a reminder, the measure was approved by 56% of the voters, folks, in 2020 with supporters arguing that establishing an independent nominating committee would boost the professionalism of the regulatory body, remove membership from the political process. We'll talk about that in a second. But Serge, Serge as we tape this, 25 candidates are under consideration for those three positions on the commission. What qualifications would you like to see from someone serving on the PRC? Is there a minimum that you want to see from folks who are nominated here? Yeah, I want to see somebody who knows a whole lot about regulating energy. I mean, you know, the biggest thing for the PRC is this transition, um, the just transition that we're doing here. And it is not for the faint of heart, but it is extra not for the lacking in experience and knowledge about energy regulation. It is... I mean, this has to be people who all day long think about, reg, you know, how to do this and who have experience doing that and who like doing that and are good at doing that. Um, everything else, yeah, you know, there's lots of other factors I'm sure that will be considered. But yeah, to me, that is the baseline and why I think this setup is, you know, why voters chose this setup, why it was so, so popular, this idea that, mm -hmm. especially at this moment, as we're doing what we're trying to do here in New Mexico, um, to transition to clean energy that we need to have people who are who know what they're doing and that is you know for me a bare minimum it's a big it's a high bar as, as it should be mm -hmm. um, and i'm i don't know who the candidates are um and what those you know whether they meet that bar but that for me is the ba the barest minimum sure you know daniel um I, I'm curious what you think about this. What can the PR student do to build trust from the groups and individuals who initially opposed this appointed idea? Meaning, aren't we just set up to have a permanently disgruntled, you know, group of folks out there who are never going to be happy with this process and looking for problems endlessly? How do we build trust with those folks? Well, you, you can't, Gene. You just described the legislative process in general, right? I mean, yeah. it's not, it's not, yes. you can't, you're not going to appease everybody. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I, if you'll go back on this show, 
years ago when I was in the legislature, I, I made the comment after we passed the PRC. I said, God help us when they realize how powerful they are. Because I recall they it well. truly are the, they truly could be the most powerful organization. Mm -hmm. Serge makes a great point where I disagree with Serge, obviously, is you know, I'm not all about the, the green, clean energy thing. The problem that's gonna happen is is now, which I, I, I feel like uh, this is a move in the better direction having the governor appoint them for this perspective. You know, these are major policy decisions that are going to be made that campaigns are run on. Mm -hmm. And the last thing you can do is go run against Governor Grisham or, or the next governor and say, you didn't do this. And then they say, well, it's not me, it's the PRC. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that there has to be accountability somewhere. And the more accountability we can give to someone that we can articulate that, the better the election process is going to be. I think right now, one of our problems in New Mexico is everything is so convoluted. It's not the school board. Right. It's the county commission, it's the legislature, it's the PRC, it's the governor. And pretty soon people are like, I'm not going to get involved. And so um, I think that there's going to be, um, you know, this is the other thing too, right? We've had this conversation here before about qualifications to be a legislator, right? right. I mean, right. listen, there's a lot of people that that would tell you, I never had the qualifications to be a legislator, but I think, you know, kicked out of college, former athletes deserve to be re represented as well too, right? So, um, you know, at the end of the day, I think it's, do you have faith in the electoral process? And I do, but I think when you're asking people to, you know, vote for appellate court judges when they don't even know who the Supreme Court justice right. is, when you're asking people to vote for PRC members when they can't name their city councilor, yep. um, I think being able to bring all of that stuff under one umbrella that you can say, this is the person that's responsible. The buck stops here. Now, the problem becomes clearly like Serge is talking about, right? Serge and I have two different opinions on our energy policy in New Mexico. If Sir, if Serge gets elected governor, is the governor right now, that group's going to go in this direction. If I beat Serge in the next election, I'm going to try to take us in the next, in a completely different direction, that's potentially. Right. That's right. And so what you would hope is going to happen is sort of like we've started to see happen. This may not be the greatest example, but I think we can see it. To some example, we've seen it with the Board of Regents, right? There's been a lot of regents that have crossed over governors, right? They've been able to weather the storm and be appointed by a Republican, a Democrat, a Republican. And part of that's because you've realized, like, especially at UNM with the health care system and all of that stuff, you just can't throw people on and off these boards. You just can't have billion dollar industries. Right. And we're going to find out in New Mexico that if we're going to, whatever the decision is on our energy, whatever our energy policy decision is, you're not going to get people to invest in New Mexico if every four years there's a potential for a 180 change in what's going to happen. And at the end of the day, I hope this new organization will solve my greatest pet peeve that I had with the PRC, which was every time they came before a committee, you had a PRC commissioner sitting here and you had a staffer sitting next to him and the staff did not work for the commissioner. That's right. The staff somehow worked for the advocates yep. and the PRC had to go out and the commissioner had to do his own thing. And I was baffled that how the person we were paying to be the brains there didn't work with the PRC commissioner. I always said, I thought it was the attorney general's job to represent the constituents and the New Mexicans and the people like that. If you had a complaint, mm -hmm. go to the AG and the mm -hmm. AG would show up at the at this hearing. But the, the structure that was put in place was you had a PRC commissioner and then you had the staff. The staff and the PRC commissioner could not have with well, a quid pro quo, is that what is that the right term? They could not have quid pro quo conversations. They could not talk to each other mm -hmm. about cases that were before them. The staff was working on one thing, mm -hmm. and the commissioner was working. Quid, ex quid pro quo is a different thing. Ex yes, part thank part you. Ex, ex I was like, right, right. they couldn't have ex parte. You and they, would, right. they would come. They would come to the the <laughs> legislature, and you would say, as a legislator, to commissioner. Martinez, hey, what are your thoughts? He'd say, well, I'm A. And then you'd see, you know, you'd see staffer uh, Martin shaking her head and you go, well, what's the matter? She's like, I completely disagree. And you're going, wait a minute, don't you guys work together? Right. No. Let me, let, let me jump in here just because of time. I'm going to continue that thought, Dan, with Sophie, because reg so regardless of the commission, how the commission is selected, still concerns about a lack of money to attract and retain professional staff of experts to draft rules like Dan's talking about and advise commissioners on complicated cases. Is that a necessity now more than ever as this panel shrinks I, well, from five I mean, I to think, three? I, I think there is the potential. Thank you for bringing that up. I think there is the potential that staff, um, that one thing that may have been creating a problem in terms of recruitment um, is at least minimized. I, I'm going to raise a, a name that we haven't talked about on this show for quite some time, but there are hopefully no Jerome Block Juniors on this new PRC. Fair enough. There's yep. no staff 
that you know is having to deal with that kind of shenanigans. Who was our Google PRC him. member with marijuana at the airport? I can't remember. I and, don't remember, but and, but you know, I so your, your so point. there's there's <laughs> what how we're funding it, and then there's also what we're asking them to do That's to right. put up with. That's right. And I think um, you know this may this I it's not a it's not perfect, but it may have the potential to ameliorate at least some of those problems. Um, and then I do think that taking a look at are we are we paying enough are we you know mm -hmm. are we funding things well enough we that's got, always appropriate. We got lots of things to discuss with this yeah. group, including P and M, all kinds of things. San Juan coal fire plant. It's amazing. Thanks again to our line yeah. panel as always for this week. Be sure to let us know what you think about any of the topics the line covered brilliantly this week on our Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram pages. And catch up with any episodes you may have missed on the PBS Video app on your Roku or smart TV.